in this video, I'm going to show you guys my top 10 street food in Asakusa. So right now we're in Asakusa and right behind me is Kaminarimon. And beyond that is Nakamise which has lots of street food. Thing is I've already done a video here of my top 10 things to do which I'll leave a link in the description below. So we're not gonna cover anything in Nakamise today but we're gonna go to the back streets. And it's another hot day in Tokyo. We just had a typhoon a few days ago and it's starting to get really really hot again. I don't know what you guys are gonna do when you come here for the Olympics but everyone stay hydrated. and bring a towel like me if you guys like my sushi girl shirts then definitely I'll leave a link in the description below and check it out all right let's go do this and let me show you guys the back streets of Asakusa oh and it's so nice because I came here so early in the morning and there's no one here well there's not a lot of people here but it's just so much better than when there's so many people here and guess what guys Michael's helping me out today hey guys so Nakamise is as touristy as you can get, a nostalgic street filled with lots of souvenirs, street food, and people. But I wanted to do something a little different in this one, and take you to some less traveled but amazing food shops which are hidden in the back streets of Asakusa. Alright, let's get our food on! Number 10, Yakitori from Yasube. So if you guys are looking for a little yakitori spot that's kind of out of the way, then this is your place. It's so out of the way there's not a lot of tourists here and all you'll find is locals. And the yakitori is pretty inexpensive. The staff here are super friendly and even though they might not speak perfect English, you'll get along just fine. <laughs> Hmm, I can smell this yakitori and I can actually smell the smoke coming from the shop. Usually they give you an option of like salt or soy sauce, but I got like a garlic soy sauce and it smells so good. I think we have some seseri, which is the neck meat. I believe this is bonjiri, liver perhaps. Maybe this is sinagimo. I'm gonna try the seseri because that's my favorite. So I'm actually more of a fan of like putting this like red pepper on it. It's called chichimi. Let's have a bite. That's some pretty good yakitori. I really like the sauce. You can taste the garlic bits. The seseri in itself is like kind of like a fatty piece of uh, of chicken, and it's because it's like the neck part. So a lot of the juices like kind of hold really well. This one is like a little like fattier, as you can see. Mm, like the umami is intense in this one. So when you have a bite, it's still like a little tender, and then you get like a little chewy texture. <laughs> Like a nice girl, like you smell. Mmm. Oh, this is good. It's nice and juicy. You don't really um taste so much with the charcoal, which is actually really good. Because a lot of yakitori place has like really strong charcoal smell. Since we are doing a street food today, we are like standing out here and getting just only yakitori. But um, you can actually go inside. They actually have like a little plates, like karaage and veggie dishes for like two, three hundred yen, which is really, really reasonable, I think. Look how big this onigiri is! It's as big as my head! Number 9. Thickest Matcha Gelato from Suzuki-en Suzuki-en is an old school matcha store and they've done a collaboration with Nanaya and they make the thickest green tea gelato in this world. At least that's what they say. But don't worry, they also have level 1 which is actually one of my favorites. Let's go inside and check it out. A green tea brand Suzuki-en has been in the game since 1848 and collab partner Nanya is a matcha sweet factory in Shizuoka. To create the thickest matcha gelato, they use a premium green tea from North Shizuoka because using low grade green tea creates a taste too bitter and strong. Alright guys, check it out. We have two different flavors. We have number one which is like not strong and then this is supposed to be the strongest one which is like level seven. Alright, so we're gonna start with the lightest version. It looks so good. Mm. Oh, definitely can taste the matcha flavor. <laughs> <laughs> 
it's actually not as strong as just your regular matcha. It's not that strong, it's really light. You know, I don't really like strong matcha flavors. For me, this is kind of like what I prefer as opposed to having something really, really strong in like a bitter matcha. But let's check out the strong number seven. But look at the crazy texture in there. It's like they just pack as much matcha as they can in this little gelato. Look how green that is. Amazing. Wow, that is a matcha shot. Super strong and bitter. <laughs> okay, let me just try the thickest one, the level seven. You know like when you drink the green tea and it's like the very last drip of tea? The thick, bitter, bitter, bitter drip is like this. Oh god, premium version of that. <laughs> but I would definitely just try this one. Like when I ordered the cup, like you initially think that it's, this is like some sort of pottery, but it's actually plastic. Man, look around at all of these shops. They're all closed and it's crazy because I didn't realize it's Tuesday and on Tuesday, this Shotenga is all closed. Well, like not everything is closed, but most of the stores just like, look, look at that. It's all closed behind me. I really hope the place we're going to is open right now. And it's open. Hooray! Number eight, Fruit Parfait from Fruit Parlor Goto. Despite the modern interior of the shop, it's been in business since 1946. It started as a fruit store, and they later became a fruits parlor in the 60s. You can still purchase fruits here if you want, but the main attraction is the perfectly designed parfaits that are more than Instagram worthy. Check it out, I got the strawberry parfait, and it even comes with a raspberry on top. You can see that there's strawberries right there ice cream and then it has strawberry ice cream and then you have whipped cream on top with fresh strawberries. Strawberries itself, they're from Yamagata. The brand is called Summer Tierra. With a little bit of whipped cream. So the strawberry itself is really nice because it's sweet but it also has like this nice tarty appeal. It wakes up your mouth and you're like ooh. Like you're expecting just like a sweet like little thing, but there's like a hint of tartness. Let's dig into this. Oh, look at that beautifulness. I just love how fresh the fruit is and it goes so well with the strawberry and vanilla ice cream. Oh, there's like a strawberry sauce or jelly on the bottom, you see? Let's get that. It's not too sweet, it's like a perfect sweetness. It's like a sauce that masses strawberry and like minus the sweetness a little bit, but only like has strawberries a good taste or flavor inside. This is awesome. Oh hey, what is that Michael? Looks like a hotel. Number seven, Dango from Momotaro. Momotaro is an unseeming dango shop that most tourists pass by, but their simple but refined menu speaks for itself. Hi. Look at that, I got yaki dango. This shop has actually been around since 1871. There's actually a picture of the shop from 1871 right at the front display. Man, now you feel like you're having like a bite of history right now. What's really popular is kiwi dango and you've probably seen it in my other Asakusa video, but I wanted to show you guys something a little bit different, something savory instead of sweet. You can smell that it's been grilled. You can definitely taste like the barbecue grilled flavor. It's actually still really really chewy, but the texture itself is very mochi like. It's very like, like sticky, like I feel like I'm just like it's all grabbing to the inside of my mouth. So it's actually a lot more salty than I was anticipating. I like a sweeter mochi that just like really really melts. And they do have a lot of like sweeter stuff here, so definitely worth trying that. But if you want to try something different, which then try the yakidango. Ah, oh, it smells so good. It's like, if you guys know what mitarashi dango is, it's kind of like the similar smell, but like, it's like a little drier version. Alright, like mask. Oh. 
a full bashi. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if you really like salty dangal, this is definitely it. It's kind of like a chewier version of like shoyu rice crackers. That's so good. Number six, karaage from Yukari. Oh, yeah. Yukari is my fried chicken spot in Asakusa. It's juicy, it's savory, and you can't get it anywhere else. Well, maybe somewhere else, but it's just so good, and I wanted to share it with you guys. And they just introduced a spicy karage, and it's super spicy and delicious. Look, I got some fried chicken. I just love fried chicken. Sorry, I know some of you guys are vegan or don't really like fried chicken, but I had to share my top 10, and I love fried chicken. So this is a juicy see Momo. Look, you can just like feel the crunch. Mm, that's so delicious. The meat juice is right in there. Look at how good that looks. And it's just so buttery soft, but still the outer shell is so super crunchy. And then, look at that. You can see like the red chili bits in there. A lot redder than normal. And you can see the salt crystals that are on it too. Ready for this? It has a nice kick to it. I love it. It's like someone just turned up the level, like turned up the volume and just said, let party in Paolo's mouth. This has so much flavor. The chili peppers just like kick in and look, I'm starting to sweat. Maybe that's just because it's hot outside, but definitely if you're looking for some spicy fried chicken, this is a spot. Sorry, it's so good. I'm just got a second one. <laughs> Number five, onigiri from Yadoroku. When you go inside, it looks so old school and I just love it. And the owner is super friendly and helpful. And what's nice about the shop is they actually have seating inside. Let's enjoy some onigiri in the air conditioning. Did you know the oldest onigiri shop in Tokyo was hidden just behind Sensoji? Their onigiri are made with selected rice from across Japan, best suited for each season, wrapped with Edomai seaweed, famous for its rich flavor. Wow, look how fresh that looks. You can smell the nori. Look how nicely it's been presented. <laughs> Oh, and the rice is still warm. You can like feel it. I like how like the onigiri is just like the nori is still like sticking out. It's like not wrapped up fully. And you can even see inside, look, the salmon roe. Mm -hmm. So fluffy. It's like eating heaven right now. It's like one of the freshest onigiris I've ever had. You can still see the juices right there. The rice is good and I just love how it's been marinated so nicely. It like brings out all of the flavors. It's so good. Oh, and Maiko got her shiso pickles. Damn, I still can't get it right. And just around the corner from Yadoroku, you'll find this cute little tayaki shop. Number four, Tenen Tayaki from Sharaku. They got here before we did. Tenen means natural. Yeah, you might be thinking, what the hell does that mean? Actually, it's just the way Japanese call this type of tayaki, made with an individual cast iron press, where most places these days use large iron griddles. It requires a skilled artist to create Tenen Tayaki, but the results are a crispy and addictive Japanese snack. Check out that taiyaki. There's so many different taiyaki places in Asakusa, but this place has the crispiest ones. If you ever had a waffle cone, it smells like that. Look at that. That's good. And the outer shell is really crispy. The beans are still like pretty whole, which is nice. I actually prefer this than like having it like really, really mashed up. I enjoy the texture of having like the actual bean itself. You know, usually, like I said, you guys all know, I'm not a wagashi person, but this place has a pretty good taiyaki. So girls are supposed to eat from the tail, so I'm getting this side. Itadakimasu. It's like it's super crispy on the side. Like, can you see like a little bit burnt? I don't usually like taiyaki because a lot of them were like fluffy and like a bread like, but this is almost like how do you say, like a thin crusted waffle? Oh, it's so good. 
I can't eat anymore. <laughs> but I'm still Genki. Number three, Menchi Katsu from Asakusa Menchi. Oh, Menchi Katsu, fresh off the fryer. Now, Maiko doesn't like us so much because she thinks it's too oily, but I just love coming to this place. You can see the juices and look how just juicy that is. And it's still hot, my hand is almost burning. Mmm, fried to perfection. It's just so flavorful. It's actually probably a lot sweeter than you would expect um, from a mechikatsu. I think the onions really, really bring out the sweetness. But man, look at just how juicy this meat is. Number two, Nikuman from Sekine. This shop behind me has one of my favorite Nikumans in all of Tokyo. The bread is fantastic, but the meat is even juicier. I just love it. It's like, look how close people are like coming behind me. Look at this Nikuman, it's so hot. I actually almost burnt my hand when she gave it to me. She's like, no, 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 don't touch it at the bottom because it's so hot. And it was, she made me hold it like this because it was so hot to touch this thing here. It's kind of hot, but I'm excited to open it anyway. Oh. Wow, you can just see all the meat juices right there. It's so moist. It's just coated the bread. Oh, that looks so good. That's your piece. <laughs> like this has all the meat. I gave her like that piece. Don't worry. I'll share it, I'll share it. Ah, it's still so hot, but oh well. Whoa, that's a good Nikuman. The flavor, it just pops. It's so juicy and tender. The meat is just so delicious and moist. Like it's very savory, but you do get a little bit of sweetness. But the meat itself, it's on point. It's a good combination of savory and sweet. The bun itself, it's not too heavy. It's quite fluffy, but also it's not like too airy. So you do feel like you're getting a full meal. I really love this Nikuman. Okay, so I actually had this before and it's really good. <laughs> I always know that, but itadakimasu. Mmm. Mmm. Mochi mochi. Right after you take a bite, it already tastes good. The bread is so thick, you might think it's really heavy, but it's actually pretty light. It's like, wahuana mm. oishi. And number one, pancakes from Benitsuru. So I just got a reservation. So this shop behind me makes homemade pancakes. And they're one of a kind of fluffy pancakes are so good. So if you want to eat at the spot, you actually have to make a reservation. They only take same day reservations and the way to do it is you'll have to come here and they'll tell you which is the next available slot. In order to make that reservation, you're gonna need to deposit 2,000 yen, so be prepared. All right, we'll come back in a few hours and have some fluffy pancakes. So Beni Siru just opened last year, but they've quickly made a name for themselves. This shop used to be called Flamingo, but the former owner's children created this new shop, Benitsuru, which means red crane. You see the connection? A lot of the time, seats are filled from the morning reservation. So I order the bacon and eggs pancake. Look how precisely the chef stacks each feathery pancake one by one like a true artist. And to top it off with their creamy homemade hollandaise-like sauce. Look at this masterpiece. Oh, you got the egg on top, two pieces of bacon. It's like sandwiched with all of this love and there's another egg inside. Wow, that's truly amazing. The first thing you taste is the creamy hollandaise sauce. You can definitely taste it's homemade. And then you get like that crunch of the bacon. Oh, and it's just cooked perfectly. And then you get to the pancake, which is just so airy and fluffy. It just melts, it's like a marshmallow. But it's so much better than that. This is quite possibly the best pancakes I've ever had in my life. I can take like the biggest bites, but it's not heavy at all. I don't care. If you have to make a reservation for this place, definitely worth the wait. 
and Michael order their most basic pancake. So I got the honey and butter. It's like the most basic one. Super fluffy. I love the saltiness of the butter. And the honey, it's not too heavy. So I think it's just a nice touch, even though I actually pour a lot. Yeah, it's really, really good. I wish this place would get so popular so I can come back more. <laughs> oh, wow. Like, definitely after eating here, you'll understand why they have a reservation process. Because each pancake takes a finite amount of time to make, and so you can't have too many customers coming in. You have to like make sure that you know, you have you can make the pancakes and serve them properly on time and fresh to each customer. Definitely worth the wait. All right, so that concludes my top 10 street food at Asaksa. If you guys found this video helpful, help me out and hit that like button. Also, tell me which area you guys want me to do my next street food video because I'm always looking for new places to go. Finally, if you want to see more of my adventures in Tokyo or in Japan, hit that subscribe button and also hit that bell button, and I'll see you guys in the next one.